I'm stealing catchphrases now because saludos program. <laughs> and welcome to another rendition of the Cleanup Crew Review, your weekly AEW Rampage review team. I am El Jefe himself, Mikey, and joining me as always, and it's been a hot minute since we've been together for a review, El Buntador II himself, the Nerdy Puerto Rican. You know him, you love him, Adolfo. Good evening, my friend. I'm so happy to have you here. <laughs> uh, it is nice to be back, yes. Saludos, saludos, programas. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Going to be talking some AEW Rampage. We get a little Tony Storm action in there. <laughs> We're going to save Tony Storm for <laughs> tomorrow's <laughs> review because, uh, like, <laughs> she is fantastic. But yeah. We're here for, you know what? We were here for a rampage that on paper, I was like, okay, it's probably going to be serviceable. And then I was just like, okay, I may actually have enjoyed this rampage a lot more after I got done yes. watching it. Yes. Yes. I, when I when I saw the matches on paper, I was like, haven't we seen a bunch of these matches already? But then like watching the show, I was it was very entertaining. So. Kudos, kudos to the performers, kudos to the wrestlers um, for on this AEW Rampage. Uh, it was especially after Revolution, uh, you know, uh, picking up, uh, grabbing, getting that baton and, and, and keeping it going. So, but let's get into it, Mikey. Yes. So Rampage opens up this week. We have a tag team match that sees Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta. So the best friend faction taking on Kip Sabian and The Butcher with the blade at ringside for this whole thing mm -hmm. a very injured orange cassidy by the way yeah orange is coming off of the last couple of weeks of not only having banger matches defending his aew champion uh, international championship but also being jumped by the undisputed kingdom and so orange cassidy <laughs> is coming off again, of losing the title <laughs> to roderick strong at revolution and so this yep. is his first match post losing that title mm-hmm yeah, Orange Cassidy was feeling the effects of having all those matches before Revolution. Yeah. As far as the match itself goes, I always say this anytime Kip Sabian is on my television screen. I'm like, I want more of him. He's so good. And I'm like, because <laughs> Blade is out on injury, I'm assuming, or he I can't think so. 100 yeah, yet. yeah. I can never keep up of who's injured and who's not in AEW, but Kip Sabian teamed up with Dr. Eggman himself yep. <laughs> in the butcher, the butcher with his walrus mustache going. Yep. <laughs> yep. I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was a good match. It, it, it's funny you say that about Kip Sabian because every time I see like his photo or his graphic, I'm like, uh, but then when I see him in the ring, I'm like, ah, uh, you know he's he's really good man he he tells a good story he does great sells um you know of course he's super maneuverable um i feel like he's one of outside of the the luchador uh contingent if you will um he's one of the more agile uh wrestlers on the AEW roster uh the butcher did what the butcher did what the butcher does and that's you know be big and intimidating um so yeah it was you know it was a it was a good matchup against uh trent Beretta, who was the the, the brawn uh and uh, orange cassie who's who is the speed um you know butcher got a few good licks and a few good backbreakers on uh on orange cassie that made me like wince you know um and kudos to Orange Cassidy for peace. He just continues to just his selling is ridiculously good, you know. Uh, oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, like the way he contorts his body uh, to make that sell is just it's it's good. It's really good. It's really really good. Um, so yeah, it very it was a very entertaining, very good first first match. So yeah. And, you know, Trent and Orange, they pick up the victory here, which is very nice. And even though Orange Cassidy is no longer a champion, we are still booking him strongly. Again, I want more Kip Sabian on my television. Yeah. Then we get into probably my favorite promo so far this evening. 
a fired up Ruby Soho is asked, Yo. you know, how she is doing after she Yo. and Cool Hand Ange got attacked by Soraya and uh, Zack Knight. Yo. Ruby was standing on business this evening because, you know, she starts off worried and she talks about how Cool, cool Hand Ange might have a couple torn ligaments. You know, it's going to be a little bit of a recovery process. And then she flips the switch because then she calls out Soraya. She berates her. She calls her vile, calls her toxic. And then she proceeds to call her whole entire family inbred. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. I uh, applause to Ruby and Soraya for their mic work. Uh, I am so ecstatic with how good Ruby Soho has gotten in her promo spots, uh, you know, because like previously um, when the outcasts were together, you know, they're as, as a group, their promos were pretty like bleh. You know, uh, like I, I remember there, there have been more than a few uh, reviews that we've done uh, that we did back la uh, last year when, when the outcasts were all together, where it, like they did, they did promo spots and we were just like, what, what was that? You know, um, and it's because we know that these ladies can do better and Ruby has just unbelievable such good acting such such good selling um you know yeah and then when she got fired up and she called Soraya's family inbred yeah that was that was good I'm I am still I am still hooked in the storyline I'm hooked in the storyline I will defend this statement for as long as I need to until the cows come home but me and Adolfo have a unique perspective on the AEW product because of the fact that we are the only two that really watch Rampage on a weekly basis and do the review for it. I'm going to flat out say it, and we're slowly kind of winning the other Biconics boys over that Rampage has had probably one of the better women's booking and storylines that we've got because we have Ruby versus the Outcast 2.0. But Rampage is also the origin of this whole Chris, Willow, Julia, and Sky, yep. you yep. know, business that we got going on too. Yep. And so, honestly, outside of that, the rest of the shows are having a difficult time booking our women. Yep. Though I will say the build for Tony and Diana leading into Revolution was probably the best that the women have been booked for uh, a very yeah. long time. Outside but of Rampage wise, and ROH, yeah, yeah. 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 But outside of that, Rampage has had the most consistent mm -hmm. and probably some of my favorite women's storylines in AEW. And Ruby is not done with Soraya. So I'm hoping this does lead to matches between her and Soraya, her and Harley Cameron, whatever that's going to look like. Yeah. And honestly, I would love to see these two be at Dynasty or even on Zero Hour for Dynasty. I would like Ruby oh, to get yeah. a pay-per-view match. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or like we said, I think it was last week, um, you know, let this lead up to uh, uh, inter uh, intergender match, you know, where you do have uh, Kuha and Ange and Ruby and Ruby uh, against Soraya and uh, and Zach, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I just I, I do want to just I, I want to talk about this real, real quick um, or, 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 or lob this question out, you know, when the outcasts were together, right again. Their spots were like meh. Now that they've broken up individually, you know, Timeless Tony Storm is just is killing it. Ruby is killing it. Soraya is killing it. So like what what happened? You know, why did they not show this uh this th theatricism, this 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 um, di this dynamic. Why didn't they have this dynamic when they were the outcasts? You know, that is a very excellent and a very good question. 
I think there was a couple of things too, because if we recall when these three were a faction with Soraya, Ruby, and Tony, they weren't necessarily being booked very well. And at that time, well, I mean, nothing fundamentally has changed because the women are always getting the tough bits when it comes to the booking and everything. But as I recall, they weren't being utilized and they were also in the midst of a very weird feud with Jamie Hayter and Dr. Britt Baker through this whole thing. And then Jamie got hurt, which resulted in her getting the beat down at Double or Nothing last year, which then, you know, yeah, Tony got the that. title and then yep. Britt was inserted into this. And then a lot of it was just a, all over the place booking because then you also had Chris come back from injury. Jade was still running with the TBS championship. Mm -hmm. They were in transition because with Jamie being out on injury, they needed to figure out how they were going to do this. And even though I love Tony winning that title from Jamie at Double or Nothing, it was a very lackluster first run because we didn't really have any strong women's you know, challengers for Tony. And then, you know, mm -hmm. or they didn't they, build anyone up. They didn't build anyone up and they really weren't building up the outcasts as like a formidable faction either because even though tony was champion they would constantly be losing their matches that they found themselves in and i don't know if they figured out what to do with them if they got they hired new writers or if i don't know maybe the women have more input in how the stories are going but I really like where we're going with Ruby and Soraya right now. Yeah. And you bring up an interesting point. It's fascinating to look at all this because just not even a year ago, the outcasts weren't necessarily being taken seriously. And now this has become my favorite storyline so far. Right? In AEW. Right. Yeah. And you got, yeah, you got one member of the outcasts who is arguably one of the current biggest stars in AEW and Timeless Tony Storm. Uh, and the other two are in a in a super engaging story. You know, the only reason I feel uh, that they are not out there more is because their storyline is on Rampage and Rampage is kind of like the, you know, the other wrestling TV show, you know, but like uh, you know, I, that, that the storyline that they're running with is, is dynamite quality. Dare I say it's, it's WWE raw SmackDown quality. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's really engaging. You have great buildup. Uh, and when the, when they do collide, you have two great wrestlers that are, that, that are going to go at it. So that's my two pesos. <laughs> i love it so we leave ruby for now because we're gonna get the other half of this promo later in the evening but we move on to our tbs championship match where we have our champion julia hart the matriarch mistress of the house of black taking on one of our personal favorites of ring of honor and jesse i apologize for what's about to happen but it is julia hart Taking on Robin Renegade. Renegade. And who do you Jesse, think is going to lose? <laughs> God. Yeah, I was just like, Jesse, if you watch this review, I want to first and foremost apologize to you because you are a Renegade Twins super fan yeah. since getting to see them in Ring of Honor. But yeah, we knew what this was. We knew where it was going. It's to continue to get Julia to some wins and to you know get her wrestling in the ring since she's been out for at least a month or two due to yep. an undisclosed injury it was what it was i was entertained but i oh knew yeah no. what was gonna happen <laughs> yeah yeah no it was it was a totally entertaining match um it was the the house rule of no maneuvers off the top rope uh that was very interesting uh, i'm not when i heard that my first thought was, are are they doing that as a story beat or are they doing that because Julia is still not 100% to do her uh, moonsault uh, finisher uh, off the top rope? Um, right. Uh, so uh, I 
and yes, um, you know, now that I've that I've watched been watching a lot of ROH, uh, you know, and I've seen Robin Renegade uh, in, <clears throat> in action, uh, you know, it is it is frustrating when I I see her up in an AEW show because you know you know that she's she's gonna eat the pin, but she's a great wrestler, you know, and this was this was a this was a very good solid match. Um, I felt that this this match showed how far uh julia has come um because she had a bunch of great spots like uh the um the german suplex that she did that was it was a that was a pretty german suplex holy cow you know uh and the fact that she picked up the win with a <clears throat> with a uh uh with a submission hold uh just kind of to me shows that she can come at you from any angle you know she can she can pin you from doing super crazy loop-de-loop up the top rope she can pin you down or, or she can beat you uh by getting you down on the mat you know so which as a champion uh is is an important thing you know it is and i Again, solid match. I knew what was going to happen with it, but overall, it's nice to see Julia. And it is interesting that you brought up that maybe she's not all the way 100% yet to do the moonsault. Then again, we saw her revolution to the moonsault in the match. Right, right. So which, which I'm wondering maybe... if they're taking extra protocol because remember, during that zero hour match, it looked like when she got spiked down to the mat and landed yeah. on her head. She yeah. didn't look too good for a couple of minutes, so maybe yeah. they're just making sure that she, there's no lingering effects from getting yes. spiked on her head. Yep. Yeah, that I, I feel that, that that might be that might be it. That she, you know, she she was cleared for revolution, but then from that spot in revolution, you know She was out of it for a few yep. minutes. Yep. Yeah, that's so, they, they wanted to But thankfully stuff. she's okay. She seems to be recovered from that, so it's very scary when we witness someone getting spiked on their head in one yeah. of these matches. But speaking of people being spiked on their head. Okay. So this next backstage segment was a tale of two things. There was the first half I really enjoyed. And then the second half is what I had an issue with. So let's start with the good. So Renee is backstage and she's like doing her thing. She's like, you know, we heard from Ruby. I'm going to try to get a word. In. And then from the back, we hear Soraya like, screaming in yep. hysterics and she's like oh okay so you're gonna get ruby side but not mine and then she kicks her name off the screen she's like get get, get out of here you know what yep. leave leave we're, leave yeah, right we're, now we're done we're done we're done we're done <laughs> so i loved it and then i loved it even more because soraya's like oh ruby is just like you just thought that was the start of this it's like you're gonna call my family inbred it's like you know what I'm coming after you. I'm going to make your life miserable. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, yes, this is great. And then they, everyone turns to leave. And we have some like random people in the background. I was like, okay, that's cool. And so Soraya just like goes up to one of them and yells at them. And then we to get into the part that I didn't like. So yeah. the interaction here is that this random person in the background who's holding a drink gets it smacked out of his hand. The drink lands on Zack Knight. Yep. Soraya is just like, you just got it all over my brother. And so Zach steps up. So like, okay, here we go. Then we get the nonsense that was the not even coherent, like garble screams, like calm down Cujo. Like he was literally a pit bull here. And I was just like, yeah. there, at one point I thought I saw spit coming out from his mouth. I'm like, is this how we're presenting Zach Knight? Oh no. He ended up decimating the person. Soraya's like, no, don't do that. And then he's like, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Do it. And then she proceeds to decimate, which I thought was funny. But we're presenting Zach as a meathead. And I was like, no. I was like, don't do this to me. We don't need another wrestler to be a meathead. Oh, I yep. get he's British. I get he's big. I get he has a lot of muscles. But I know he has a brain in there. And you presented him in, yeah. you have been presenting him in Ring of Honor as a fun individual who has a sense of humor and a good wrestler. Yeah. Oh, uh, not this meat. I hate the meathead trope. Adolfo is the one wrestling trope I hate yeah. so much. I don't, I, I don't understand why they opted to do such a, 
in extreme 180 uh with zach uh you know he's like you said from seeing him and on roh you know that he he can do good character work so why are you just going to reduce him down to this meathead this this slobbering like pit bull number one number two i throughout my my years of watching wrestling i have always i have i don't like talkers i like i like showers right so i wouldn't if you want to 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 make him out to be this you know slobbering beast okay fine but don't do it on you know random job or wrestler that you called up for the night put him you know put him in the ring let people see his 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 ferocity in the ring and so that he can back that up you know because like if you haven't seen him on any other the promotions if you haven't seen him on roh he's just dude that come came in and leather and is you know barking and slobbering you know so um i i felt like it was a very missed opportunity um you're right the the first the first half was great um even harley cameron's little like uh quick at the end little bit was great it's just that the meat quite literally in the middle was yeah. now i'm still willing to give this a little bit of grace because if they can if when we continue with this story if they can redeem themselves and present Zack Knight in a better way, then I'll be like, okay, it was just a one-time thing where it was kind of like, oh, this wasn't necessarily executed very well, then I'd be fine. But if this is going to be how he acts the whole entire time where he's just slobbering all over the place, I'm just like, ah, oh, we did so well at Ring of Honor. And... <laughs> but I am excited, though, because I do like yes. Zack Knight and the little bit that we've seen of him in Ring of Honor, I think... He has a fine balance of being a big bruiser, but also being actually a good technician too, which yes. is what we've uh-huh. seen yeah. him presented yeah, as yeah. Yep. in the t- three matches that we've gotten with him so far in Ring of Honor. I am excited. I am going to continue to be invested in this story, but let, let's try to present Zach in a better light because I want to I wanna be supporting him so much. Yeah. So from here, we get our next match, and this is my personal match of the night. This sees Penta El Cero Miedo taking on Action Andretti. And this was my match of the night because it had everything. It had good wrestling. It had yep. speed. Both of them were flying in and over and on top of things all over the place. Mm-hmm. This also had my move of, moves of the night. Action Andretti like jumping over Penta to the top rope to do a Poison Rana, which looked yeah. devastating. Penta doing Penta things all over the place. This was my match of the night. I was like, oh, Penta, I have missed you on television so much. Yep. 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 Yeah, this was... um, This was my match of the night as well. Um, I Again, I, like, I say this week in and week out every time Penta's on. You know, I I, I love watching Penta work. Um, and matching him up with uh, with action was great. Uh, the size difference between the two, holy cow! Action made Penta look like he was a seven foot giant. It was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it was you know it was great action, great storytelling in there. Um, it was it was a great match. I I would have much rather had this the the, the match of the night, the main event, uh, than the, the actual main event that we got. Yeah, I was like, I felt like if we swapped what we got for the main event for this, I'm like, I could, you know, be giving this a higher grade. I still enjoyed this rampage, but yeah. Well, I mean, we're already there, so this Penta in action had my match of the night, which then leads us into our main event. So this is a, this is a. So I don't know if a certain other company owns the rights to a triple to the word triple threat because yeah. the if you're not watching wrestling and the way that they phrase this match, you might think of something yes. else. And yes. I was just like, listen, I know that wrestling is all about the mm, and the horniness of everything. But I was like, we, we need to calm down. But 
I'm talking about a match, so listen, audience, don't take this out of context. But in our main event, this is a three-way tag team match. And as I say those words, I just realize how bad it sounds out of context. But this was a triple threat between Private Party, again, not helping the cause, um, the Bounty Hunter, Brian Keith, and Commander, which I was like, we're still pairing them up together, which... I'm not against, but I need some reasoning as to why. Why? And then taking on top flight, so Darius and Dante Martin. A- AKA Action Andretti and Action Andretti and Action Andretti. I'll explain, love... I'll explain later. I'll explain later. Yeah. I'll explain later. <laughs> I was just go like, ahead, ahead, they're all, I don't want to say they are the same, but inherently <laughs> because they, they are all, like, they're all tw- they're twins. They're like They're clones. triplets. I feel <laughs> like uh, it's a lot. So I'll start with the things I like. So I like Private Party's entrance as always. We seen Cheesecake letting them in, which was fantastic. Shout out to Cheesecake. I Cheesecake. also really love that Isaiah Cassidy gave the kid the do rag and then was like, psych. Yep. And I mm-hmm. love the kid was taking it in stride. I was just like, you go, kid. I was like, that you're my type of fan. <laughs> I was just like, you didn't cry. You didn't yep. get upset. He was just happy to be involved. I was like, fantastic. We also got an Isaiah Cassidy scream, which is always a bonus for me. Now, with all that being said, that was the best part of this whole entire match because this, to me, I enjoyed parts of it, but I also felt that there were bits of it this where it's kind of (laughs) clunky. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. I thought Top Flight were great as usual. They are a tag team. Private Party did great because they're an actual tag team. But I am invoking our host, Andrew, our resident tag team expert, when I say, as much as I like Brian Keith and Commander individually, we got to stop throwing people together in tag team. Yeah. And as what? soon as I saw the card, I was like, I know which team is taking the pin in this match, and it makes me upset. Mm-hmm. Penta got the win, but then we had to balance it out because Commander took the pin in this uh-huh, one. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. You know. Uh, oh man. Um. And to make it worse, you know, Commander and and, and uh, Bonnie Hunter Brian Keith, uh, they both came in wearing the 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 fucking the serapes, you know, almost like matching serapes. Uh, like if we're gonna make him a tag team, let's make him making a tag team. But like, yeah. yeah. Also, also yeah. AEW shop. If you make those serapes for sale, I will definitely buy one. I'm just putting yeah, it out there. yeah. Just saying, just saying. But yeah, yeah. And you know, Mikey, um, you had said when uh, Bounty Hunter Brian Keith uh, became all elite, you were you were hoping that he would come out with like the the wanted posters. You know the bounty posters and stuff like that, um, which since yeah. he's come to AEW, he hasn't done. Uh, which I, I feel for the character would be um, a great addition. Um, in the ring for this match, they they just seem like the oddball out. It, it seemed like it, this was a private party top flight match with Commander and Brian Keith kind of sort of sprinkled in there. Um, which, uh, you know, at the beginning uh, of the review, when I said, when I looked on paper and saw the matches, I was like, haven't we seen some of these matches before? Like, you know, if, if we're going to make private party and top flight duking it out here let's do it like like you've been you know doing everyone else that's duking it out you know uh one one team picks up the win then like a month later the other team picks up the next swing and uh, win and then we have a rubber match and 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 what have you like um i just feel like top flight and and private party that them two dueling it out has just kind of been like crammed down our throats almost you know, and like they try to like put different frosting on it to like hide the cake, but it's still the same cake, you know, because, uh, you know, uh, 
Private Party and, and Top Flight were in the, the six man and Revolution, weren't they? Private Party was because they were part of that 12 man because it was Private Party, Jay Lethal, Jeff Jarrett, Satnam Singh, and Willie Mack of all people. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I could have sworn, but but I mean, we have seen Private Party and, and, and uh, Top Flight go at it before. So, you know, um, not saying that their matches aren't good, their matches are great, but it. If we're going to have a top flight private party match, let's have a top flight private party match. I'm still trying to figure out, like, I thought, you know, because both teams are, what, one and one at this point. You yeah. would think by now we would have had our third rubber match, and I don't know what they're doing, what AEW is waiting on to do so. I mean, I have, I like private party, and I like top flight, and I've liked the matches we've gotten with them so far. But this felt very weird. I feel like you could have just had removed Brian Keith, removed Commander yes. from this, and just let yes. this be the rubber match for yeah. Rampage. Yep. You know, same time, but it's less chaotic. And yeah, Commander and Brian Keith, I love them both individually, but they didn't need to be in this match. But obviously, AEW didn't want Private Party to get pinned yet. So therefore, we yep. made this a triple threat. And once again, the Luchador gets pinned. <laughs> What happened to AEW? We were doing yep. so well. We were doing so good. We were doing so good. So uh, you know what? It, it's all right because Penta got the win in the match previous. So you know, I just I guess that's fair. <laughs> yeah, I just hope if so the the tag team tournament for the tag the vacated tag team belts is going to be starting. I think this upcoming week. I hope that even if Top Flight and Private Party don't make it to the finals for the belt, if they meet in this tournament, that they that they bring it, you know, and don't you know, don't let them get lost in the shuffle, because uh, you know, not not to not to be spoilery, but. On collision, FTR said that they're throwing their their hats into um, uh, for the for the tag team championship. Um, and uh, and I, I'm sure a lot of the other you know, like the Bullet Club is probably going to come be coming back for that tag team championship. You know, there's going to be a lot of big names coming for that tag team championship. Who knows? Maybe BCC might be coming in for that tag team championship. But do not let Top Flight and uh, Private Party get buried in this tournament you know um give them the spotlight that they're due you know like like they did in the continental classic you know uh where you like on paper you would look at some matches and be like meh but then when they you know when they got in the ring that the matches were great yeah i just hope that i agree with you private party and top flight i don't want them to get lost in the shuffle we're going to I would like to talk about spoiler alert what happened in collision, but we're going to wait until we record that review to go more in depth about it. But it's not a spoiler. We are getting a tournament for to see who's going to become new tag champs since yep. Darby and Sting vacated the titles. But yeah, I thought that if we had taken Brian Keith and Commander out of this match, I think we could have this would have been better. Yeah. because it felt like an afterthought and there was no need to put Brian Keith and Commander in here outside of we need someone to get pinned to not let Top Flight or Private Party be the lo the quote unquote losers of this yeah. match. Yeah. Yeah. So or you know or um I would have switched it up and had you know for Brian Keith and Commander going up against Orange Cassidy and and Trent Beretta, and then have the Butcher uh, in there because that's that's something else that uh, you know there was there was a lot of speedy guy a lot of speedy uh, you know flippy dippy do which which I love um, but it would have been nice to have one like a big meat pie in there uh, to like catch someone as they jump and just like power slam the crap out of them you know just to spice it up. 
Yeah. Actually, I think that I would have liked that better had we swapped Brian Keith and Commander with Kip Sabian and the yeah. Butcher because we had a lot of high flyers in our main event, yeah. but it would have been a nice foil to have Butcher be your powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, or uh, have, have the mogul, ground the, people. Have the Mogul Embassy tag team in there. Gates of Agony, too. Yeah, Gates of Agony. Saw, again, spoiler alert, Gates of Agony might be involved something else in collision but we'll talk about that during the collision review but Adolfo that brings us to the end of Rampage for this week so now we gotta rate this thing out of 10 empanadas so Adolfo for the Friday March 8th 2024 rendition of Rampage what do you give this out of a scale of 10 empanadas it's a 7 out of 10 uh, homemade ham and cheese you know nothing spectacular but it's that warm and fuzzy in my tum tum uh, that that I like you know uh, it was a it was an entertaining rampage it all of all of this the, the backstage spots knew what they had to be they went they did the thing and they and they went on you know um, and as a show, it just, it felt nice and cohesive. That it did. I'm going to agree with you. I'm also going to give this a 7 out of 10. I think all the backstage stuff needed to do, they did the things that it needed it to. I thought the matches were enjoyable. Overall, I enjoyed this Rampage. Not necessarily my favorite, but it was pretty enjoyable nonetheless. And I think my favorite thing, of course, is, is that we're good, we're adding an extra layer to Ruby and Soraya's feud, which is really nice to see. But Adolfo, this does bring us to the end. So we got to do some housekeeping real quick, and then we yep. got to get up on out of here. Yep. So if you enjoyed this particular review, you can check out all the other types of reviews here. We pretty much have no life and cover every single major wrestling promotion between AEW, WWE, Ring of Honor, and TNA. It's a lot of wrestling, but it's a lot of good stuff. And we have some really fun co-hosts to do each of those reviews. And on top of that, we also review almost every single pay-per-view from said companies. Yeah, too. we do. Yeah, so we do. stay tuned because the <laughs> TNA boys are going to be coming up very soon to review the TNA sacrifice pay-per-view, which was a lot of fun. And I can't wait to talk about that with Andrew and Will. But if you can't commit to watching our beautiful vases on the YouTube channel, you can check out the clips we have on social medias where you can follow us at BC WrestlePod. Or as an alternative, you can let our voices carry you through the day because we have audio versions of all our reviews. So there is no excuse for you not to listen to us ramble about wrestling. Just kidding. <laughs> we love you and supporting us regardless. Speaking of supporting us, we love what we do here and we've gotten pretty good at the way that we do our videos. But we're always looking for ways to improve, and unfortunately, that does require some monetary gain. So if you want to support us monetarily, you can A, become a Patreon subscriber where you can get exclusive, never-before-seen videos like our watch-along. They're chaotic AF, you guys. It is nuts. Yeah, like, especially do you when my see... kids are on screen. Oh, God. It is so <laughs> fantastic. Do you want to see me and Andrew scream like little girls during the Royal Rumble when Jordan Grace made a surprise appearance, even though she was in she is in TNA? Do you want to see the AEW boys like yell and scream at their television screens during the Osprey and Takeshita match while also complaining about Taz's commentary? Yep. Do you want to see how my ribs turned out that I was smoking prior to Revolution? Yes. That's all the meaty sauce in the beard. It was so fantastic. They look so good too. <laughs> it's fantastic. But you can become a Patreon subscriber to get those access. Or better yet, if you click on the next level link embedded into the description, you can head on over to the next level app where we also now have a Venmo and a PayPal too. There are multiple Ew. ways you can support the cause. Support the cause because we want to do great things. And of course, last but certainly not least, you see us virtually. But if you want to see us in person, in person. some of the Biconic boys are going to be at the New Jersey WrestleCon Saturday, May 18th, Sunday, May 19th. We're going to have a table there. We're going to be selling merch. We're gonna, we want to see you guys come out and have a conversation. We would love to meet you, talk about wrestling. And also ask you, why do you not leave us comments in our videos? It's so <laughs> lonely here sometimes. <sighs> also, Billy Starks and Queen Nominata, you better get ready because I will be getting autographs from you. Oh, like, yep. 
Yup. Also, ready. Mama Wayne, we love you too. We love yep. everyone that's going to be there. I'm super excited. It's going to be fun yep. to get the East Coast Ab boys and some of the West Coast boys out there. Abbott on, get ready. Yes. <laughs> you got Abaddon. some screaming, oh my, Ab you got some screaming fangirls in, 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 in the, B the BC squad that's coming. <laughs> yes, Abaddon, we love you so much and I cannot wait. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah. But me and Adolfo are going to get up on out of here because uh, we also got things to prepare for for the next few days, which is going to be a lot of fun. But... From myself, Adolfo, and the rest of the Biconics boys, remember, take care of yourself, love one another, and as always, stay true to you and be Biconic. All you guys, gals, non-binary pals, he, she, theys, and of course, all the gays of the internet. We will see you for the next Rampage review. But until then, ta-ta for now. Billy Stark's outro. And Thank you so much for tuning in to another Vibe Tribe production. What's going to happen next time? Well, you're going to have to tune in to find out. But until then, remember, take care of yourself, love one another, and as always, make sure that you keep the good times rolling. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you next time.